Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Alpha Ambassador, and in this series of short video tutorials, we're going to deep dive into Sony's new menus that we see on cameras such as the A7 IV and the Alpha One. So without much further ado, let's get started. Let's take a look at the camera settings that we can use to shoot time-lapse movies. Now there is an interval shoot function. This is uh, where we capture stills and then create the time-lapse movie in post-production editing. But we can actually create a time-lapse movie in the camera. And that is by going to the S and Q mode. Now that stands for slow and quick. And if we slow the frame rate down in the S and Q settings to one frame per second, but play it back at 60 frames per second in our computer software that will speed up real time by a factor of times 60. So clouds that might seem basically static to the human vision will suddenly start racing across the sky. So this is uh, this is the easiest way to create a time-lapse movie in our Sony Alpha cameras and doesn't require then uh, post-production editing of those stills. So uh, if you are doing that I I would uh, typically slow the shutter speed down and that might require the use of an ND filter. The video can look a little bit choppy if we're using shutter speeds that are a little bit too fast. So I would try to slow the shutter speed down significantly when you're creating these slow and quick movies at one frame per second. So if we are going to shoot um, stills and then um, make a, a, a time-lapse movie from those stills in post-production, I would uh, strongly recommend shooting in the RAW file format. To give you an example, example of uh, why we would bother to do this in um, post-production is I've got a before and after processing. So that image on the left is exactly the same image on the right except I've post-processed it. And the raw file gives you much more ability to do aggressive editing to get it exactly where you want it to be aesthetically. Okay, so let's uh, go into that um, shooting uh, menu. That's uh, page six. You'll see on the drive mode. If we roll over, we'll get to the interval shoot function. Now, even um, you should set this up before you plan to use this function because uh, it'll be ready when you next want to use um, this uh, on location. So we'll go to the interval shooting. Now, you can leave this in the off position now. We can just enable it later when we're ready to shoot our time-lapse but we can now start going down to the menu items below and set this up for the first time we want to use it. Now the shoot start time is set to one second by default but if you're using a remote release, say Sony's Bluetooth remote, you might as well lower that to zero seconds. But if you are going to start and stop the time lapse by pressing the shutter release on the camera, I'd be inclined to move up to two seconds or slightly longer, just to allow the vibrations of the camera to settle down after having pressed the shutter release. Now the shooting interval is set to three seconds again by default. But um, you'll probably want to either slow this down or speed it up, uh, depending on how quickly the clouds are moving through your landscape. I always uh, look at the clouds first, and if I can't really see them moving to the human vision, I will often extend um, a, a, a slower than three seconds. I'll extend that out maybe to five seconds. If the clouds are visibly moving to the to your naked eye, then I might even lower that to one second interval. As you uh, choose the shooting interval, it'll tell you how long it takes to shoot 30 frames at um, five um, seconds in between each frame. Basically, you're committing yourself to two minutes and 25 seconds at the moment. But 30 frames, which is the default, isn't nearly uh, enough frames to create a time-lapse movie. Uh, if you play that back at 30 frames per second, your time-lapse movie is going to last just one second. So that is sort of a ridiculous um, default to have only 30 shots there. So we're going to extend that out and I've extended it out to 300 shots. So if we're playing that back at 30 frames per second, I'm going to have a 10 second video clip. But of course now if I'm using a five second interval, I've blown that time out that I need to stand there with the camera waiting for it to finish to 24 minutes 55 seconds. So you probably want to pack a drink or a sandwich 
image while the camera does this so if you obviously uh, the clouds were moving quite quickly to your naked eye and you've lowered the shooting interval down to one second then you've got a much more reasonable four minutes and 59 seconds to wait until the last frame of that 300 cycle has finished capturing so uh, we're going down below number of shots now to uh, AE tracking sensitivity. Now you may have seen tracking sensitivity list to, uh, listed next to focus, but this is exposure tracking sensitivity. Now I definitely recommend moving that to low. So the, um, the exposure isn't going to be um, brightened or um, uh, reduced uh, to prematurely if something bright or dark appears in front of the camera. You either want to set that to low or just set the exposure on the camera to manual because you don't want that exposure fluctuating between each frame otherwise you're going to get this time-lapse movie which is um, very varied in exposure with blinking um, overexposed and underexposed frames so again AE tracking sensitivity I definitely recommend low or using manual exposure mode on the top of the shoot mode dial there Okay, and there is the reminder, manual exposure. The only time you might want to go into auto exposure, say aperture priority, is if you're shooting um, the sunrise or a sunset and you do need the exposure to move over time. But if you're shooting in uh, fixed level ambient lighting conditions, I would definitely recommend just going into the manual exposure mode. The shut, shutter type in interval, this is on the second page of those interval shoot function settings, uh, we're going to be using the electronic shutter. If you're going to start shooting thousands and thousands of shots, generally you're going to reduce the wear and tear on your mechanical shutter if we just shoot all of that in the electronic shutter instead. And of course we've got um, another one more menu item which might be greyed out depending on the exposure mode on the top of that camera. So if you switch over to the um, the aperture priority uh, you should be able to switch this to on and that prioritizes the um, uh, the interval rather than the exposure and here are my top 10 tips for interval image capture uh, number one format your card you don't want to have a card that's nearly full because you're going to be capturing hundreds of images and number two charge your battery again for the same reason you, you know, the camera might be shooting for over half an hour so you definitely want um, a good battery battery life there. Set the capture aspect ratio to 69. This is the aspect ratio of movies. Your, th uh, your aspect ratio of your sensor is 3.2 so you've got a little bit of a mismatch there. So you definitely want to set the aspect ratio to 69. Uh, choose aperture priority or manual as your shooting mode. Uh, number five, use slower shutter speeds, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Uh, number six, use an aperture wider than f8, and the reason for this is because um, you don't want to be um, uh, shooting at f16 or something, and you've got um, uh, sensor dust, and then you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of frames to clean uh, those, uh, those dust specks off. So if you're shooting at f8 or wider, you're going to find that... Um, those dust uh, spots aren't very visible at all. Number seven, capture in the raw file format um, so that your, your um, dynamic range is as high as possible. Number eight, ensure the camera and tripod are free from vibration, i.e. don't put the uh, tripod on a boardwalk with people moving uh, uh, across that and uh, shaking the camera. Um, number nine, switch steady shot to off. That's uh, really important for non-Sony lenses because you don't want those gyros on creating a little bit of vibration when you're doing slow shutter speeds and number 10 finally switch the focus mode to manual focus you don't want the focus changing between each and every frame otherwise you're going to get this uh, shaking effect as the camera tries to zoom in and out in micro amounts Okay, so we talked about the shutter speed, and that is um, you don't want to re uh, use very fast shutter speeds, otherwise you'll end up with what's called a choppy video. You're not recording much of uh, what is actually happening in front of the lens. You might just be uh, capturing very thin slices of that time uh, if you've got a very fast shutter speed. And uh, if you do record any movement blur, this will help your time-lapse video uh, flow more smoothly rather than being very choppy. 
Okay, so and there is a reminder, manual focus for your focus mode. You'll be able to process the raw files and create your time-lapse video in a variety of different software. Uh, but if you haven't got a favorite, then uh, Sony's free Imaging Edge software is up to the task of creating your time-lapse movies. And you can add audio and titles to your clip. If you found this information useful, head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. I'm offering an Alpha Creative Skills support channel where you can download a 500 page camera specific ebook and I've covered most of the late model Alpha cameras. You'll also be able to download a cam set file if you own one of the later model Alphas. You'll be able to set up your entire camera with just a single file copied to a memory card. I also offer additional uh, ebooks for people to download to help them master the uh, skills of creative photography and also a range of uh, one hour seminars that look at the uh, using the, uh, the camera gear to the best effect and also to build up your skills of photography in general. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor.